Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and we will be continuing with the circles unit set of IXL problems, mainly the U's. So today I have IXL U3, which has to do with arc length. So uh, this is one of the IXLs where my students start to kind of dip off in terms of understanding when it comes to the circles unit. So uh, let me do a little bit of an introduction to arc length and then we'll do some problems so first uh, arc length arc length is exactly what it sounds we just want to find the length of this arc so if we took this 90 degree blue line right here and stretched it out so it was perfectly straight and we could measure it with a ruler or measuring tape uh, that is exactly what we were trying to find here except you know you can't do that and in the real world when you're doing um, certain pieces of geometry uh, for you know engineering or designing or something you can't do that any way so uh, here we'll be learning how to pretty easily do the arc length uh, uh, within a circle so uh, remember if we want to find the length of the entire circle right here the length of the entire outside or perimeter of the circle we call that the circumference let me get a little snip here So we want uh, to find the circumference. Now remember, circumference has two formulas. It has either pi times diameter or it has two times pi times the radius. So remember, these two formulas are the exact same thing, right? It's just pi times the diameter or pi times two radiuses or radii. It's because two radii equal one diameter, right? There's two radii or radiuses in one diameter. So same formula, just different letters. Um, and so the circumference is just describing the length of the entire thing. So if we cut it and stretch it all out, so it was a straight line like I illustrated earlier and measured it, that would be the circumference of a circle. It's just the perimeter. Now for arc length, we want to do that, except we only want to do it for this piece right here, this piece uh, of the circle, this arc, this 90 degree arc. Okay, so when we do these problems, we uh, separate that into two different steps. So the first step is we're gonna find the circumference. Okay, we're gonna find the circumference of the entire circle. Uh, and then step two, we're gonna use a proportion fraction or proportion ratio to come up with the actual arc length. So first we'll do circumference. Now, which formula should we use? Again, it doesn't really matter, but since we go to our circle over here and we see the radius is four centimeters, we'll just use the formula with the radius in it. So circumference equals two times pi times radius. It says our radius is four, so it's just times four. Okay, now remember pi is just 3.14. It's nothing special. It's literally just the number 3.14. It's the constant. So we're just going to combine everything after this. We'll combine the easier like terms here. So 2 times 4 is going to be 8. And then 8 times pi is just 8 pi. And we are going to leave it as 8 pi. Because I excel doesn't want you to multiply it out for some reason. It wants you to leave pi in there. Maybe it's trying to make it easier on you or something like that. So we're just going to leave it as pi. We're not going to multiply 8 by 3.14. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, again, is going to be making uh, what can be called a proportion ratio. So the point of this is, is we're going to make a fraction with a top and a bottom or a numerator and denominator. And the numerator or top is just going to be our 90 degree angle right here. It's just going to be the degree value we have for our arc. It is a 90 degree arc. So we're going to come over here. We'll have 90 in the numerator. And the denominator is just the degree value of the entire circle. And that is always going to be the same. The degree value of the entire circle all around, going completely around in a circle, 360 degrees. So the de denominator is always going to be 360 degrees. The numerator is always going to be our uh, arc value right here, the degree value, which is 90 in this problem. And the denominator is always going to be the entire 360. So we have our proportion ratio right there. And now we're just going to multiply that proportion ratio by our eight pi. 
Now, some people um, might find it easier to write 8 pi over 1 instead of just 8 pi. It's the same exact thing, right? 8 pi is the same as uh, 8 pi over 1. Dividing anything by 1 or multiplying anything by 1 is just itself. So uh, this helps to illustrate that now when we multiply these two fractions, we're just going to multiply straight across, right? So we're going to multiply 90 times 8 pi first. So we'll go uh, 90 times 8 is just 720 pi times pi. We'll just do pi. And then multiplied, or I'm sorry, divided by 360 times 1 is just 360. There we have it. Now, IXL wants us to simplify, which is not a problem for this one. Uh, 720 divided by 360 is just 2, right? There are two 360s inside of 720, so it's just going to be 2, and then you got to add the pi at the end, so 2 pi. And that's it. Remember, IXL wants you to keep it in terms of pi, so don't multiply it out. So we'll go back. We'll type in 2 and then click pi. And that is the answer, okay? Uh, this problem, this problem uh, is an easier uh, version of this problem and let me point something out real quick. Uh, so we can do the exact same, <clears throat> the exact same process here where we can write the circumference and then write the proportion ratio and multiply it from there. There's a much easier way to do it. So this is the same kind of problem except our arc is apparently a 180 degree arc or just half of a circle, right? This is a semicircle. So really it's going to be just half a circle or half of the circumference of a circle. So if we found the circumference of the circle, again, the length of the entire outside here and just cut it in half, we'd have our arc length. So it's kind of a shortcut. So the circumference for this thing circumference for this thing is going to be uh, 2 times pi times r. So circumference is going to be 2 times pi times r. Our radius, it says, is 4 over here. So we'll do 4. Circumference is just then 2 times 4 is 8. So we have 8 times pi or just 8 pi, same thing. Okay. Now, like I said, the circumference is just the length of the overall outside of the circle. And we want the length of half of that, just this 180 degree arc, right? 180 is just half of 360. So we're just gonna divide this by two. So eight pi divided by two, or just half of eight pi is four pi. And that's it, kind of a shortcut. So we'll go over here, we'll type in four, type in 4 pi and that is correct okay same deal with this one so I'll move on to the next one um, same deal with this one just keep in mind they give you the diameter here so you wouldn't do 2 pi r you do pi times d but again same formula same everything we'll go to the next one okay good so once you get a handle on those types of problems, uh, you're going to see that they're going to give you problems where you're working backwards. So it says that we have a circle and it has a diameter of eight inches. So the entire length here from one side to the other is eight inches. And it asks us for the angle measurement of our arc here that has an arc length of pi. So this time they're giving us the arc length. They're kind of giving us our, our end solution. And it's asking us to work backwards to figure out what degree value is this arc. Again, this is where a lot of students get stuck. So don't worry too much about it. We're just going to run through the exact same process that we were just doing. Okay. So first we want the circumference, step one. Circumference is... This time you can do 2 pi r or you can just do pi times d or pi d for circumference. So circumference is going to equal, remember the diameter here is 8, so it's just going to be 8 pi. 
pi times 8 is just 8 pi. Okay, that was easy. We're already done with that. And now uh, we're going to go to step 2, and we're going to kind of work backwards. So we're going to write a proportion ratio. And remember, the proportion ratio is just the degree value of the arc up top divided by 360. So we don't have a degree value yet. That's what we're looking for. And I'm just going to call it x for right now. Okay, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for x. If we can figure out what x is, we're done. So that is the degree value. That's our numerator. And we're going to divide that by 360, as always. And then we're going to multiply everything by our circumference, 8 pi. I'll do 8 pi over 1. And that's going to equal our arc length. And again, they gave us our arc length as pi here. It's pi. So it's pi inches long. So everything's going to have to equal pi. Okay, now we just do some arithmetic and get x by itself. So we'll multiply across again. Uh, x times 8 pi is just going to be x 8 pi divided by 360 times 1 is just 360 equals pi. Okay, now we want to isolate the numerator, so we're going to multiply both sides by 360. Three sixty divided by three sixty just cancels out to one, so we're left with x eight pi equals three hundred sixty times pi or three sixty pi. Now we want to uh, we can cancel out the pi's immediately, so pi's cancel out. Pi divided by pi, so we're left with x eight or eight x equals three sixty, and from here we'll just divide the eight out. 8's cancel out, so we're left with x equals, and what is 360 divided by 8? Uh, I'm going to check my work real quick here. Yeah, and it's going to be 45 degrees. That's it. So this right here is a 45 degree angle. That's our degree value, so we'll go back. We'll type in 45. Good. Okay. This problem is the same thing. Uh, they give us a radius here of 10 feet. They give us our arc length of 2 pi. So they already give us the answer. We just got to work our way backwards. Okay. Jump another level. Okay. Uh, this is a this is a uh, another version of the same problems we've been doing, except they don't give you kind of a simple degree value like 45 degrees or 90 degrees or 180 degrees they give you something like 150 so we'll do this one because there is something I want to highlight with how IXL works okay plus it's more practice so same deal we have a circle with a radius of 12 right here and we have a degree value of 150 degrees for this arc right here so first step, we're going to find a circumference. Circumference equals, uh, we'll do 2 pi r, 2 times pi times r, because again, we have a radius of 12. So we have c equals 2 times pi times r is, again, 12. Radius is 12. Okay, combine the easy like terms. So 2 times 12 is 24, so c is just 24 pi. Okay, one step down, circumference. Step two, proportion ratio. Uh, so now we are going to make a proportion ratio. The numerator is always going to be our uh, arc degree value up here, which is 150 degrees. So we're just going to go 150 divided by always, always, always 360, the entirety of the circle. So 150 divided by 360 times our circumference. And then that is going to be equaling uh, our answer, our uh, arc length. Okay, so we're going to multiply across here. I'm going to leave the 1 off this time uh, just for uh, uh, a different perspective. So we'll do 150 times 24, which is 150 times 24 is 3,600. And then pi, right? 
We don't want to multiply the pi out. Remember, IXL is very finicky. And then divide it by 360. Okay, now we want to simplify it. Luckily, we're in a good position to do so. That's just 10. 3,600 3, uh, 3, divided by 360 is just going to be 10, so we're left with 10 pi. Okay, so we're going to go back, go down here, type in 10, 2 pi. There we go. Okay, uh, I will do one more example here. I'll end the video. Okay, so step one, we're gonna find our circumference. Circumference is two pi r. So circumference is two times pi times r. Our radius here is 18. So we'll just write 18. Circumference is uh, two times 18 is 36. So we'll do 36 pi. Okay, step one is complete. Step two, we'll write our proportion ratio. So we have 105 divided by 360 multiplied uh, by 36 pi. And now we will multiply across. So 105 multiplied by 36 pi comes out to be, comes out to be 3,780 pi divided by 360, okay? Um, and this is something that IXL does. You have to simplify it the best you can or it most likely will not accept your answer, which is unfortunate. Um, so first here, uh, we're gonna see what both of these numbers can be broken down to. Immediately we see they end with a zero, so we can divide both by 10. So if we decide divide uh, both sides by 10 here, okay. um, we come up with 378 divided by 36, sorry, 378 pi divided by 36. Okay, and from there, uh, we wanna see how much we can break it down. So can we divide both of these by two? Yes, we can. So 378 divided by two is going to be 372 divided by, no, 378 divided by two, it's gonna be 198 pi divided by 18, okay? Can we break that down anymore? Well, maybe, so we'll do 189 divided by nine. So now we're gonna divide both sides by nine and that's going to be 21 pi over 18 divided by nine is two. Okay, can we break this down further from 21 over pi to two? Well, not really, right? If we divide, uh, if we try to get rid of the two and divide both the numerator and denominator by two, we end up with 10.5 pi, which IXL does not like. Um, you should just keep it as a fraction like this, so 21 pi over two. So we'll come back, we'll click here, type in the fraction, it'll be 21, uh, and then maybe pi, click here, over two, submit, and that is correct. Okay, I don't know why IXL is so finicky. Uh, if you multiply the pi out, you might get it wrong. Um, if you do not simplify, uh, you might get it wrong. Uh, if you divide it out, it becomes a decimal. <clears throat> you might get it wrong. So just to be safe, keep, try to keep it as a fraction and simplify it as best you can. And that's going to be it. Okay, so next video, we'll go on to sector area, which is very, very similar. And uh, work hard. Okay, see you later, guys. Goodbye.